Hi ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everything in between. I am Zen, and this is the fourth video in the form series. In this video, we are going to be creating this drop-down menu here, the select menu, as well as adding in these radio buttons and the checkbox at the bottom. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, what you will see is that even though we have been able to format nicely our drop down menu so that it matches the same style as the rest of the form, the same can't be said for our radio buttons and our checkbox. And the main reason for this is cross browser support. In particular, it is the Firefox browser which has real difficulty in the resizing of IR elements. So in this video, like I said, we're going to focus on the drop down menu and getting these basic radio buttons and checkboxes in. And then the next video, we will be looking at customizing these to make them look nicer across the browsers. And that being said, the first thing we need to do is to go back to our original form, which is this one here, reg1.html, and open it up in our editor, which in this case, of course, is Visual Studio Code. So here we are in Visual Studio Code with the Reg1 form. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to resave it as Reg2 because it's always good to have a history of work that we've done. So File, Save As. And we're just going to rename it Reg2.html. OK, so now we've done that, the first thing we're going to be looking at is the creation of the drop down menu. OK, so we are looking at creating this here. As we can see, we've already we've got a label and then however this drop down menu system works. And we can see it's at the top of our form. OK, so let's go back to our form. And so what we're looking at is putting it in this area here above the first. So the label looks like it's a standard label because it is. So we're going to go for label and we're going to give it the class of reg underscore label exactly the same as the others and then four and we're going to call this uh sal for salutation uh, which is the correct term of you know how someone's title okay but since most people don't understand the term salutation we should just put title in the actual uh, text that people will see so the drop down menu works as a select element and inside the select element, we then have option elements, which are the different values that we see. So we start off with the select element. So it's select. And as you can see, it has a name and an ID. And we'll put a class in just as we've done with all the others. So in this one, we're going to give it the name of Sal. We'll give it an ID of Sal. And then we'll give it a class following the Ben method, as we've done before, of reg double underscore. And because it's slightly different, we're going to call it uh, we'll, we'll call it select because it is a selection style element. Okay, now we've got to click in between the closing of the first tag and the opening of the second tag, and press enter a few times. So we've got a space and it's in here that we add the options and as I said before it is in fact an option element. Now the option element does have a value so we're going to start off with doctor. The value in the option is the, the data which is sent when the data from the form is requested. So it doesn't have to be the same as the data that people see. Okay that bit that people see is in between the uh, open and closing of the option tags very similar to that of the label and so here we're just going to put doctor so in this case the value that is sent back will be the same as the value as people see but that is just coincidental in this one it can be different okay so again we do option again and all we're going to do is just do a couple of basic ones and we're not going to get into some sort of 
argument about what are the values that should be in here. You can put whatever values you feel are relevant. I'm just going to put in the more classic values for want of a better word. So option, we've got Dr. Mr. Mrs. Miss. And we're going to go for Ms. as well. Okay. And that is actually all we need in regards to the HTML side. If we just save that and we open up the form. <laughs> Sorry, I thought oh, I've done everything and I forgot. I've got to look at this one here. Ah, of course that won't help us anymore. We need to close that one. We need to show this in our live server so we can actually see it. There we go. We're like, oh, hang on a minute, everything's gone wonky. The reason, first of all, we can just check, yep, the drop down bit works. That's great. That's not a problem. What's going on here? And that is just simply because if you remember uh, all of the other elements, the labels and these input fields are all inline block by default. And we haven't told us that it's anything else. And therefore, if we look at what we did before, is that we use the BR, the new line rule, after the input field to make sure everything stays in their own line. So we'll just do that here, save that. And once again, there we go. And it's looking a bit puny. Okay, let's be honest, that's not exactly what you want it to look like. Uh, we need it to sort of match this, the rest of the form. And so that's what we're gonna do. And it's not any really different from um, how we formatted the input fields, okay? It's just a, it's a select type, and that's what we uh, are targeting. It's got its own class, which is reg select, and that's what we're gonna to use to format it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the text. There we go, reg text. We've got reg text focus, so we go underneath there. And it is reg dominant dot, sorry, to make sure it's a class. So dot reg double underscore, and I think I said it was select. Let me just double check. Yeah, reg select. So, now what we can do is we can cheat a bit and we can copy the original text information. And then we can uh, see how that affects our form. Does it look right? Does it not look right? Okay, so we do that. We can back out to look at our form. And although that works, it doesn't quite look correct to me. Okay, now what's interesting is that notice how the height is still different. Let's check the code. Height, 2.2 RAM, height, 2.2 RAM. So again, just like we had with the button, it may be there's a slight difference in how the box model is actually calculating the individual elements and we need to check that this is the same across all browsers and as you can see i've already got the other browsers open here but i need to copy the address and paste them in so i shall copy this one and let's go to the other browsers okay so here we have it in firefox and you can see that the drop down menu is slightly different here okay it is still smaller, it's still not the same width either. Look at that, the widths are slightly out. The height is slightly out. And the text is really small now. I think I did actually make a mistake in the last video in that we didn't make this text larger. So we'll fix that in both of these because it does look a little bit twee in here. We should also have a quick look at how it looks in Opera first though. So here we are in Opera. And you can see it's uh, very similar, not quite the same but it's very similar to that of Chrome. In fact, I would say it's a hybrid between the two because in Chrome, we get the drop down menu here, okay? Uh, but there's no change to the, the drop down arrow there. When we look in Firefox, there's a shaded area to help us understand that there's a drop down. And then when we look in Opera, there's a you know slightly different color, okay? So it's more like Firefox in that sense, 
um, in its shape or its, its, its design, but it's following the sort of main rule here. It's only when we roll over it, okay, that we actually see it gets shaded in. So, you know, it's a opera's own little twist on it. But we can see it's small in all of them, in all three. It's not as wide as the others. In all three, it's not as tall as the others. Okay, and because the text is quite small, it does look a bit tweaked. So we need to look at a way of uh, changing that. So we're just going to minimize this down. We're uh, probably going to put this now into a left and right uh, view as always, so we can see the changes as we are doing them. So let's deal first of all with the normal text box because we didn't change the font size in those. So that will be in reg text. And all we need to do is do font size and we've got a height of 2.2, .2, so a height of 1.8 rem would probably still look okay. Let's have a look. Yep, that looks quite big there. And I don't quite like it hitting the sides. So what we'll also do is just do a padding left of one ram okay and that just stops it from touching the side i think it just looks a bit nicer with that little sort of break there so we've got 1.8 rem for that and let's see what happens when we put that into our select so what did we say we said font size 1.8 rem and that is substantially bigger. Now, as we said, because of the way the input field is, or the way that select button doesn't quite do the height the same, we probably want to change the select to make it slightly higher. So let's just move up a little bit at a time, so 2.3. Okay, let's try that at 2.4. That's still substantially smaller, 2.6. Okay, I would say that 2.6 rem is about the right height to match. Like I say, I'm not quite sure why these are treated differently, but like I said, I believe it's something to do with the, the way it calculates the margins and the padding along with it. It looks like 1.6 rem, sorry, it looks like 2.6 rem is roughly the same as 2.2 rem in one of these. Okay, and I say the text is the same size. I'll just, we'll just check that. I can put in doctor and we see they both look like they're the same size but we don't need this box to be so wide so even though again the, the width value is incorrect it doesn't quite match it I still think it should be smaller I think about here it should be fine so we're looking at about a third of what it is and it's currently at 18 rem so if my mass is right 6 rem should look about right and then we have a look at drop down and yep they all fit in and this is important one look for the biggest word okay and that's miss and that still fits in okay now the other thing about this is again like i said before i like things centered ish and there's a slight problem with this because it doesn't quite work perfectly in chrome okay i believe the change will look fine in opera and Firefox using the default code, but I don't think it looks right in Chrome. We'll just double check and we'll just bring up the others first. So that still looks fine. And that change in there looks fine as well. So that's great to see. We'll just get those out of the way for the moment. Uh, but to center them, we would do normally text align center. And we save that and we notice that in Chrome zero difference in firefox it has done it it is centered in firefox we can see it there works absolutely fine no problem we have a look in opera and we can see in opera it has not moved okay so not full cross browser support in case you're interested and you want to find out what does work and what doesn't work you can also go to a very good website called can I use.com? Okay, there's some very interesting. Can, oops, not I can use, it's can I use. 
Okay, so this is just a bit of a side bit. And this is brilliant because you can type in sort of features. So let's just have a look at, um, okay. So here you can see the different types of browsers and the additions that come out of them. But for the actual instance that we're using it for, it doesn't actually cover it because, you know, I don't know, I don't think you can do something like select text align, no. So it doesn't work in there, but it does work on most things. So even though I just told you it's a great website and it truly is. And to be fair, most browsers today are actually all compliant or more or less the same level of compliancy. Um, but there you go. So that's just a little thing that you can use. And we'll probably will look at that later on. However, how do we get it to work on these other browsers which are misbehaving, including Mr. Chrome? And if I remember correctly, there's an additional one that we can do. So it's text align last. Okay, and that fixes it. So again, control Z, and suddenly it's now centered in that window. And again, if we look at Firefox, Firefox was working fine before, it's still working fine now. So we haven't broken it on Firefox. We look at Opera, and now Opera is also centered. Okay, so across the three browsers, it works fine. I know there's going to be people going, well, what about Safari? Well, Apple dropped the window support for Safari several years ago, and I don't own a Spac, I mean, a, a Mac, so I can't check it, okay? And I'm not willing to spend two grand on a MacBook so that I can check it, okay? Especially since at the moment I have almost no followers and, uh, you know, this is not a monetized platform. So unless someone's going to give me a nice Mac to play with, I'm not going to. Anyway, back to this. So really, that's all we need to do for our drop down menu. Uh, you can notice we, when we click on it, we've got the sort of blue color thing. We don't have this ugly aquamarine. If you really want that, we could try and do the same thing as we did up here. In fact, Rather than do a new rule, we'll just add it to that rule. Okay. Yep, and it works for that as well. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but each to their own. Okay. For those of you who are not sure what I've done, in order to use the same set of rules to multiple rule groups, all you need to do is to put a comma after the first rule group and then put in the next rule group in. Okay, and then you can see I've got two sets there and that rule has been applied to both of them. Okay, so with that being done, our next step is to add in our radio buttons. Okay, and the radio buttons are also fairly straightforward, although I'm going to maximize the window to do this so now the radio buttons if we remember uh, go at the bottom here so it's below the password field and above the submit button the way that radio buttons work is that they have both a name and an id and a value okay and if you remember in one of the previous videos, I said this is where the name and ID becomes more important. Okay. And we'll see why. Uh, well, a bit later on. But so the radio button is going to go here. There is something fairly unique with radio buttons, which I'm sure you are more than aware of. However, I shall just remind you. In that, when you have a radio button, only one button out of that group can be selected at any time. You can have multiple groups of buttons, and but only one button in each group can be selected at once, okay? And this is done by the use of the name attribute of the radio buttons. So if we have a look at the original ones again, and I keep jumping back to it, we can see that these are about marketing emails, okay? So that's what ours is gonna be about. 
and therefore we're going to give the name to these radio buttons of marketing. Radio buttons are another type of input, so we can do input colon radio, and we're going to give the first one an ID, so it's a hash of none, and we'll give it a class of reg double underscore radio. Okay, and there you see you have the name there as well, and we're going to call that marketing. We're going to put the label after the input field. Okay, so we're going to have the uh, radio button first and then the text and not the other way around. So we're going to have label. And this label is going to have two classes. We're going to first of all have the reg standard label. And then we're going to put another dot in. And we're going to do reg double underscore label again but this time with a double hyphen because this is the modifier for radio okay and then in here we need the four attribute and this four attribute as you remember is related to the id which in this case is called none and that is our first radio button group oh, almost because we haven't put in the label so in the label is no marketing emails. And then we'll repeat the process. I'm just going to add another line here because I like my radio buttons grouped together, but still slightly apart from everything else. So we'll do this again. So it is input colon radio. The ID for this one is going to be for site. It's going to have a class of reg double underscore radio. And the name here is marketing. Oops, I should also say I should have a BR after that label. My apologies. And again, for the label in this one, it's going to be label. Uh, the class of reg double underscore label and then again reg double underscore label double hyphen radio and then in the four it's going to be for site and then the text that people are going to see is I wish to receive emails from this site only. So for this last radio button, again, it's going to be input and again, colon for radio. It's going to have an ID, which is the hash of all. And it's going to have the class of reg double underscore radio like the others. And again, its name will still be marketing because it's part of the same group. And then again, we're going to put in the label. And this is going to have the class of reg label again. And again, reg double underscore label double hyphen radio because that is the modifier. And then the four will be for all, because that's the ID of it. And then in the text, it's going to be I wish to receive a million pounds. Uh, no, marketing emails from this site and third parties. Okay, you'll see these are not great labels, uh, but it's just give us the idea. So, we just have a quick look at this. We've got three radios, all with the same name, marketing, but with different IDs and the same class. And again, we have the labels for each one, 
and both of the labels, sorry, all three of the labels have two classes, the reg label and then the reg label with the radio modifier on them. And when we save this and view it, it doesn't look that great. No, no, that's one that does look great. It's that one. And we're like, what in the world has happened here? And the reason being is that these labels have the same formatting as these labels, okay? Uh, so there's a limited in the uh, width that they can be. They're right hand side um, formatted. I just noticed, missed out the codons on those. Uh, they're right hand uh, aligned. And so it looks quite a bit messy. And although we tried to put on different lines, it hasn't always looked like it's worked properly. Actually, it hasn't because I didn't put them in the others because I'm getting lazy. Maybe I'm all tired, whatever. Save that. And we can see it looks better, but not a whole lot better. Okay. So there's quite a bit of formatting we need to get these labels looking nicer. And again, what we're going to do is do the uh, side by side to help us do this. So now we've got them side by side. What we're going to do is to start formatting the labels. So the labels, just to confirm, they are still inherent in the red label, but we've also got the modifier part here of radio. So we're going to go to where the labels are, which are here, and then we're going to put the modifier group underneath. The reason why we put it underneath is that because these have the same level of specificity, the last rule wins. Okay, so because we're going to overwrite a lot, if not all of these rules actually, um, we want to make sure that they do overwrite them and not have this rule set overwrite this rule set. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is to extend the width. So let's set the width for 550 pixels, first of all. Save that. Well, it's starting to look a lot better, a little bit neater. Let's text align to the left. Not quite sure what's happened going there. Looks like I've got a slight error has happened. So let's just close that. I'll close that and I'll just restart it. These can this can happen. So just my server. There we go. Just a slight error there. So looking a lot better already. Um, text is still too large though. So we're using font size 1.4 for our labels. Let's take give it a font size of 1.1 rem. So what that looks like. So that's uh, 11 font. That looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. Okay. Um, in fact, I am pretty much happy with that. I was going to do some formatting with the radio buttons just to get them off the side of the wall. But it looks like the default formatting seems to be doing the job for us already. We also we want some more space down the bottom here, but we're not going to worry about that for the moment. What we do notice though, is that not one of these uh, buttons are selected by default. Okay, and we can change that and we're gonna be nice to our user. We're not going to have this one down here selected by default. We're gonna choose the top one. And we're just gonna check that this is true for all of them. So we go up here, Let's see, does that re-up? See, same on this one here, that's, that's Firefox. This is Opera. And let's just move these up a bit so we can see them. Yeah, formatted off the side quite nicely. There's a nice little space here. Might want to extend that later. But that all looks more or less okay. I think it's the um, padding actually rule which has pushed these off, which makes it quite nice. So, all in all, right, it's just getting a default checkbox. And let's just move these down and that is really simple that is actually the HTML and in the radio group the one that you want to have checked you're literally inside of its rule just type in the word checked save it 
Okay, so as you can see, that one's already got it. So if I put it there, I'm gonna just refresh the page. You can see it's that one. And to prove that, if I get rid of that one there, and I add it to here instead, and save it, you see it jumps down to this one down here. Obviously we don't want it there, because we're nice, we can put it in here. Okay. And so that's it, that looks great. What we want to do now is to add our checkbox in. So if we go back to the original form, you can see there's a nice little line break and it's the terms and conditions one. And this is perhaps the most common use of checkboxes in almost every form. Whenever someone registers, you should have a, they agree to the site's terms or conditions because you don't want someone joining your website without accepting those, okay? And this is what we call an explicit uh, acceptance, okay? Um, you'll notice due to the, what's called the cookie laws in the UK, uh, that's not the, the real name for it, but it's what everyone refers it to. Whenever you go to a website, you get that little pop-up box that says, yes, I agree to the terms and conditions. And that is because the law states there must be explicit, okay, explicit uh, permission given. And it's the same when you join the site, we're forcing an explicit acceptance to our terms and conditions so that they can't say, oh, no, I never agree to it. OK, if you don't have that and you sort of just have a bit saying by registering, we agree to the terms and conditions, they can sometimes argue that they didn't see that. And even though that's their fault, it gives them some little legal leeway, probably not much, but some. But here, when they tick on that, they have to, you know, they, they are absolutely agreeing to it. And what you should have in reality is actually this to be a link to the site's terms and conditions so that they can read them and okay them. Again, because we're only doing this as a sort of learning example, we're not going to do that. But when we do this into one of our full mock-up sites, that is something we will definitely be doing. Um, so we've done that. Um, sorry, we're about to do this bit now. So I'm just going to maximize this up again. And so all we're going to do is add a new BR here. We could have actually put the whole radio buttons into a paragraph rule to produce this, but we're not going to. OK, so the checkbox is actually extremely similar to that of the radio button. OK, it is input, colon, checkbox. Okay, we're going to give it a ID, which is a hash of T and C. And we're going to give it a class of reg double underscore check. Okay, and you can see the checkbox comes up with a name as well. And we're going to also give the name T and C. And then again, we're going to do a label. And our label is going to have the same rules as the checkbox one so it's going to have a class of reg double underscore label and then another one of reg double underscore label double hyphen radio and then in the four we're going to do t and c and in the text which should work with a tab button yep i accept the sites terms and conditions and then again we'll type in a new line at the end there save it view it and that looks there you go the two look very very similar again they're not perfect matches that's fine they're not meant to but that is as good as you need it to be um, if I was doing this for a real site I might have put these into you know, a little box on their own so they're easier to identify. Maybe format this out a bit, put the register button down a bit further, stuff like that. But again, for this learning situation, this is absolutely fine. And so this video is now probably around about the 14 minute mark again. Whoops. Um, and this is the reason why we're going to stop here. And like I say, in the next video, we're going to look at making these look more like the rest of the website okay 
there are some issues and we will look at those issues in the next video as well as the solutions so as usual i hope this has been really useful again i don't know who i'm talking to here because i don't think anyone's listening but please like subscribe and comment i can't make these better unless you tell me what what you like in these videos you know what you don't like in these videos i can't do anything about my voice i'm afraid but am i talking too fast am i talking too slow am i gulping too much at least i'm aware i'm doing that um you know just tell me what you want and i will try my best to uh reflect the new videos on that um although no go go good dancers i mean i quite like them but i've got no budget and uh, i don't think you really want to see me in suspenders if you do uh, I think you need to see a psychiatrist instead. Anyway, so uh, that's the end for this video. I'll shut up before I get arrested. I've already said the like and subscribe stuff. I will uh, see you next time. This is Zen, signing out.